You know, it's going to be better if we unmute this thing. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. Happy Friday, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I'm Joe Everest for those aren't fins, and this is my sister, Sarah. Hello. This is Ask a Fence Gal Friday. And this is probably why we're fence people and not... Yeah, not professional not, like yeah. Facebook and YouTube livers. Absolutely, yes. So we, we'd better keep our day job <laughs> yes. is, what I'm, is what I'm thinking. Yes. Well, so Justin, Justin's the one that brought this to our attention. Yep. Thank you. We yes, appreciate it. Appreciate that way we didn't get like 20 minutes into the show <laughs> and then go, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. The microphone's got a little slash through it. Yep. All right. All right. Brent, it's good to see you as well. Hello, Brent. Welcome. Brent's here, been here about just about every oh, week. Oh, he's like a super fan. I yeah. love it. Uh, thank you for joining us, yes. Brent. All right. Lots of... Thank you, Michael. Yep. Appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Absolutely. All right. Audio's up. <laughs> got the Great. thumbs up. We're good to go. Great news. <laughs> All right. We got... Hello, Michael. <laughs> How are you? It's good to see Hello. you. <laughs> Scott says hello, Chili Bowl Joe. Oh, man, that's hello, a fun Scott. Time. That's it's a fun time. It is. So what this is about is every January, you go to the Chili Bowl, uh, see some indoor dirt track racing, some uh, sprint cars. It is a lot of fun. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to make the trip this year. Oh no! Why not? I got the little one coming. Oh, that's right. Uh, Josie does the, take president. The, that's true. Well, and see, you called her Josie, which is oh, is no. technically going to be her legal name. I mean, it's going to be printed on go. her birth certificate, but, and her middle initials are. Okay. Okay. So, Junior's the initials. So, basically, it's Joe Junior oh. is what I'm going with. And like I said, legal name would be Josie, but I'm going with Joe Junior. <laughs> Uh, it's going to go over well in your household. Well, I'm the only one in the house that, <laughs> that, 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 that thinks that. But uh, I, it might stick. You, we'll see. You never know. <laughs> Time will tell. But uh, but unfortunately, well, no, not unfortunately. Unfortunately for the Chili Bowl crowd, but fortunately yeah. for me, uh, Josie will be here right around the end of the year, first last week of this year, first week of next year. It's kind of still a toss-up. Now, the question but. is, uh, how many orange onesies do you have currently? Uh, all of them. <laughs> Sold yeah. out. Yeah, we just, uh, worldwide, uh, <laughs> I just went through and I bought them all. So, we also have a small warehouse. Oh, there you and go. Love it. Scott, thanks for joining us. All right. Hi, Marcia. So, Marcia and I have worked in the restaurant industry for a long time together. Or okay. There until kind of I stopped. But, yeah, we went from Buckingham's. To oh, yeah. uh, Ruby Tuesdays, okay, and then to Piccolo, which is awesome yeah. restaurant in Nixef. You guys don't know about that. It's beautiful. The facility's great. The food's awesome, and the owners are amazing. So if you if you're in Nixef, check it out for sure. Very good. Very good. <laughs> How's the bourbon? Was this a question from last week? Did we talk about bourbon last week? Uh, you did. You were going to try to turn this oh, into a bourbon tasting. You know what? Show. Yep. I was headed to Kansas City the next day. Yeah. So yeah. it actually. I have tried it. I didn't try the bourbon we picked up. Oh, really? I did. So, I got to try it. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Nice, it was nice. it was good. It was awesome. I liked it. Yeah. I so they they pre sold quite a bit of it too. Oh. Okay. Um. So I had a little bit of the pre sale of it, but no, my bottles are uh, safely in the cupboard. Yeah. We have one. no uh, no self control over in our household, <laughs> so we had to try a little bit of it. You said it. All <laughs> right. Let's see. Justin wants to know, do you guys do regular fence work like on the farm barbed wire? So we don't do barbed wire. Um, we do occasionally get into like your, the rail, the vinyl rail fencing, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, sometimes some pipe fencing if that comes up. Um, but as far as like your agricultural cow fence is what I call it, you know, no, we don't. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of companies in our area that do it and they do a great job and it's just not our specialty. So Yeah, it Specifically, the reason, the reason it's not our specialty is you really have to have a, a truck and trailer set up for agricultural fencing. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, cattle panels and barbed wire, you know, the, the rectangle mesh and, the, and barbed wire, or it's uh, welded pipe, uh, yeah. which even those two different fences would probably take different setups. Absolutely, you know? yeah. So we're not set up for it, and there's a lot of guys in our area that do it. Yeah. So it didn't didn't make a lot of sense. We talked about it. For a little bit but yeah. it really didn't make sense for us to try to jump into it when 
Uh, in all honesty, it would take a lot of capital up front to buy the equipment to do it right. And uh, there's already folks that are in the market doing it and doing it well. Yeah. So Absolutely. Oh. Hello, Garrett. Hello, Garrett. How we'll are you? We'll do the hand. Oh, this is a real oh, life he's hand a emoji. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he also said that he's a super fan or top fan. Sorry. Oh, top fan here. He is. That's I a fact. I love it. I love That's it. Thank fact. you, Garrett. Yeah. So, yeah. So, specifically, who is Garrett? What does Garrett do? So, Garrett actually handles our staining division. So, he goes out, um, works with the crews on staining uh, pre-existing fences. <laughs> so, if you had a fence, you needed it stained, you'd call us. we understand or learn about the scope of your project, and then Garrett would execute it, and they do a phenomenal job. Staining Super. rock star. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Say. That's your new, your new title staining there, Staining rock star. Yeah. <laughs> and top fan. Yeah, and top fan. Comma, top fan. <laughs> Or say oh. hi to Jill. Hello, hi, Jill. Jill. So Jill is my mother-in-law. Yep. All right. So mm. Jill, we got to know how do you feel about Joe Junior versus Josie? Oh, yeah, she's probably on board. She's, I'll bet. she's probably I'll on bet board. You are, she, Jill. Uh, yeah, she. I, I can see her going for it. Yeah. Uh huh. What? Oh, all right. Hey, Levi. I love it. Let's go ahead and take this one down. <laughs> Thank you, Levi. Aw. Jackson. All right. Hello, Jackson. How are Hi, you, buddy? buddy. <laughs> Jackson's my little man. Well, he's not as little as he he's was before. Big. Little kid, oh. he's a linebacker. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah so Brent's, uh, Brent's another one of our top fans. He wants to know oh. the update on the front door. Is it going to be orange? Hmm. I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and say yes. <laughs> I mean... Is this one of those it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, I think this is. Uh, it's one of those it's one of those ideas that really just has to grow on you. Oh. You know, like so at first glance, like if you did a little tester of it, yeah. It, you probably wouldn't get the real like effect. Yeah. So we should probably just go ahead and paint the whole thing orange mm -hmm. and um yeah, and just go with that. Maybe you could do like a super light shade every day and just gradually oh. get people used to it. Oh, and then I like it. A month and a half later, it's blaze orange. Boom. Yeah. I don't. Sorry, Taylor. I'm not but... gonna be able to distract her for that long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about like it needs to be one day to uh, where right. okay. it's like uh, you know, hey Taylor, this is a you day. Oh. You go do you. I'm talking manicure, pedicure. <laughs> I'm talking massage. Uh -huh. You do today is you, and, then, oh. and I'll take the okay. kids. Like this is you, and then the kids. Mm. So Macy's old enough to watch Jackson. Yeah, sure. I just lock them in the house because <laughs> I don't want to get in. Jackson will get into the paint. Yeah, what could go wrong? There will be handprints yeah. on the door if Jackson's outside. So we just lock them in the house. Mm -hmm. And we tell them, uh, I mean, I'm there, obviously. I'm right there. So if anything happens, I can rush in and save the day. Um, and if they need, like, food, they can just knock on the door, and I'll, I'll go. I think it could work. Now, here's my other How question. How long could it take to paint a door bright orange? Do you have a ring doorbell, though? That could put a damper on all of this. Yeah. <laughs> need to turn that off. Yeah. You need to turn that off. Good thinking. Good thinking. <laughs> Whoa! What? What's up from Germany? Buddy, Matt, Matt, how are you? He's that's in, awesome. He's holy a, cow, that's he's our international fan. I love it. But we are, this the live show is now international. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Actually, fun fact: um, our mom lived in Germany for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they were stationed there for she a little bit. She was an army brat, and yeah. yeah, she was stationed in Germany for a while. Yeah, <laughs> she's actually uh, born in England. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's Which, right. That's right. I say okay, that. like, yeah. a, like that's new information. <laughs> you know like, that. Oh yeah, all right. <laughs> Yeah, so that's awesome. Yeah, very yeah. Cool. Hi, Matt. Matt. Thank you for Hi, joining us. Uh oh, no, I'm in trouble now. Do you have room in that doghouse? Yeah, come two? on over. <laughs> I got, I got plenty of room. So, oh, yeah. right. very welcome. Of course, very Thank welcome. You. Macy's oh. won't let you do that. That's, yeah, that's why we're locking true. her in the house. <laughs> yeah, it's a I mean, shame she doesn't know how to operate granted, doorknobs. I was gonna say, granted, she's <laughs> highly intelligent, and uh, when she's twelve, so she can operate her uh, yeah. the back door. We're to think about that one. <sighs> Off air. <laughs> Off air. We're giving away too many of the secrets here. It's true. All right. So, Sarah, last week we talked mm -hmm. a little bit about um, about scheduling, about yeah. food schedule, because we're yep. talking about that the weather was nice last week, but you know there's some rain off and on and all that. Yeah. And here we are today. 
And it has been a rainy, nasty mess. It is, but they're out there. But it was it was beautiful yesterday. Yeah, it was it was eighty four, eighty five yesterday. Mid eighties, sunny. Yeah, now it's a very fall day. Mid forties. Yeah. (laughs) Cut it in half. It's actually cooler now than it was when uh when we started work this morning. Yeah. It's cool down here. Yeah. yeah, the guys are out there building fence. So days like today don't really slow us down too much. You know, it's a finish day. So, you know, we've talked about before that we start projects on Mondays and Tuesdays, finish them on Thursdays, Fridays. Yep. So by this point, the concrete is cured to the point that we can nail fence on it, whether it's raining yeah. or not. Yep. Um, so today's a nail day. So they're nailing up fence. Yep. Um, finishing it up. Finishing it up. So as long as it's drizzly dreary, um, the guys especially would prefer just to get the work done yeah. rather than push it into next week and have next week be an incredibly busy week. Um, and really, honestly, we kind of leave it up to them. Yep. You know, the, like our wood crew chief, Scott, he's a great guy, very driven. He wants to get work done. So when he says, Hey Joe, or Hey Sarah, we probably ought to do a shop day today. Yeah. You know, work on the, work on the shop, get some tools squared away, that sort of thing. You kind of go with him. Yeah. You know, but yeah, absolutely. He was ready to build fence today. He was. And we're not using heavy machinery today. So that makes right. that another I mean, we, we kinda had that conversation last week about the auger that we use and you know how it's on tracks, but in days like today where you're using a nail gun and more hand tool oriented, yeah. you're not using big machinery, so the rain doesn't slow us down. Yeah, as long as you oil up the nail gun really well at the end yeah. of the day, everything yep. should be fine. Absolutely. What is the best time to seal pine pickets and allow it to dry properly? Yeah. Fantastic question. That is a great question. Thank you. So do you want to leave it up there or no? Yes, I do. I <laughs> I just clicked it and I didn't mean to. So there we go. So typically with the treatment on pine, you're going to want it below a 12% moisture content. Sure. So that kind of depends on what weather we've had, speaking of weather. Um, but typically, what would you say, month and a half? Yeah, yeah. You're right on the money. Then that is going to depend on time of year. A uh, month and a half is pretty good if we're talking, you know, late spring, summer, early fall. Yeah. Uh, if we're talking late fall, winter, you know, where it's obviously a day like today, if we it's consistently wet weather, yeah. it, might, it might stretch that out a little bit. Sure. You know, on treated pine specifically, what you're really waiting on is for that treatment to cure out. Yep. Now, uh, like a cedar picket, you could test the moisture in that, you know, if we put it up today, obviously it's going to be wet, yeah. but... Yeah. And Monday. So this isn't a really good example because Monday is going <laughs> to rain as well. But uh, there's a lot of times where it can be stained the day it goes up. Yeah. You know, a lot of times, you know, one of the services we offer that's become fairly popular is pre-staining the lumber. Yep. Uh, but if, if for whatever reason, you know, the client elects not to pre-stain it and it's cedar materials, it's ready to be stained the day of. Yes. As long as the moisture content's you know twelve percent or below, yep. uh, with treat with the treated pine, you really want to give it at least a week or a week, at least a month, probably a month and a half, uh, unless it's really rainy. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, now moisture meters, you can find a moisture meter on Amazon. Yeah, it's actually specifically where we buy moisture meters. Absolutely, and I think they're twenty thirty dollars, something yeah. like that. Very user friendly. Yep. Very easy. Yep. To you use. literally. So it's got two prongs. You literally turn it on, set the wood type, insert the prongs into the wood, and it'll tell you exactly. Yeah. Now, here's the thing we, we should talk about. So you don't just take one measurement. Right. Yes. So what we typically do is we'll take three measurements inside, three measurements outside of the fence. So the finished face and the structure. Mm-hmm. That way we're testing pickets and we're testing rails. Uh, we're testing, or we're testing um, you know, shaded areas versus sunny areas, that sort of thing. Absolutely. Anything that stain's going to touch, you're going to want to – you're going to want to test it. Yep, yep. And just like pickets, pickets hold moisture differently. So definitely want to get a good, what, five to six different pickets. I mean, to your point, yeah. shaded, not shaded. Just right. get a good sample size. Yeah, you'd uh, want to make sure that the three samples you take on the outside and the three you take on the inside aren't just the inside and outside of the same picket. Correct. Yep. Yep, yep absolutely. Right. Very good question, Levi. Yeah, that's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Even though you only say, said hi to Sarah. <laughs> hello, Alicia. Oh, hello, Alicia. How are, How are you? you? We've known Alicia quite a long time. Yeah. And see, I'm going with this one because it says, hi, Joe, first. Oh, no. We're not going to do that one. She obviously <laughs> meant to say Joe first, and then she felt bad, and then she's like, okay, I guess. I'll say hi to Sarah. It's just because you visit her more. Well, so, and the reason I visit her more is because she works at the cafe. Yeah, she's, she's awesome. She works at the College Street Cafe. 
yeah. and it's literally walking distance from our office, which <laughs> yes. is very convenient, and it helps that they have great food. It's amazing. And really good desserts. Yes. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I have to limit my, you know, my College Street Cafe exposure each week uh, because when I go in, there's always that dessert, you know, cabinet just staring you. To f- it does, yeah. It's not good for me. Yeah, it's see-through. Okay. So it yeah. is just kind of looking at you the whole time. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got like, you know, uh, I'm not, I was, I was going to get into desserts. So I'm not even going to do that because it's lunchtime. It's not good <laughs> for me. So, yeah. hello, Alicia. Yes. Hello. All right, so... Um, yeah, so Levi's question kind of tied in with the weather thing. So we talked yeah. about weather and talked about Absolutely. Spain. Um, what else? What do we got? So it's been a decent <sighs> week this week as far as, as far as uh, getting fence projects done. Uh, yeah, today's really the, the questionable weather day. Yeah, everything else has been through. pretty sunny. We've been able to pre-stain boards for next week. Which That's is right. Exciting. That's right. We've got yeah. a beautiful chestnut job coming up. So if it's. It, it should be near completion by Friday, so I'll I'll share oh, yeah. some pictures. Project update. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll kind of show you start to finish, but chestnut's a beautiful color. Has a little more of like a red tint. Yeah. And it, it's going to look sharp. I'm excited. Chestnut's definitely one of my favorite. Yeah. On a western red cedar fence picket. Uh, well, and, and cedar yeah. two or fours. But the picket's just really, that chestnut tone really makes it pop. It's beautiful. So we offer three stain colors. Well, technically, we talked about this last week. <laughs> Saint Joe Experts has a plethora of colors, yes. um, but we typically offer three: uh, cedar, chestnut, and walnut. Is that right? Yes. Yep. So, what's Very the difference cool. in the three? So your cedar tone is going to be more of what I consider, for lack of a better term, like a, a wet cedar look. So okay. when your fence is wet and it's just that really pretty kind of darker tone, beautiful. It's awesome. It's what you think of when you think of like a traditional fence setting. Like it, it's just a more brown color, um, but it's not super dark. So a lot of people that have lighter houses, they just want that natural look. That's your go-to. Sure. Um, so chestnut's going to be a little bit darker, and then it's also going to have more of a red tone. Um, and that's probably just the Western red cedar that we're using because we, yeah. we've seen it on incense cedar, and it doesn't have quite as much red, which is right. really interesting. Uh, but here... It just it pulls a little more red, and so yeah. we have a lot of customers that have um, that brown red brick color, and it matches very well. Okay, so like an earth tone, earth yeah. tone siding, or earth tone brick. Right, right, nice. and I, I don't know by itself. It, I mean, it, it would look great even if you didn't have red brick, but that red brick really helps like pull that color out. Red it's pops. really cool. Yes, yeah, and then walnut is going to be your darker brown color, gorgeous, almost like a rich chocolate transparent color. Like okay. it's. It's great. So you see a lot of shutters in that color. You see, you know, some of your darker trim is that color as well. But it's just, it's beautiful. Um, it helps cover up some of, um, maybe if you if you have an existing fence that's a little bit older, that's kind of your go-to. Covers yeah. up a little more of those blemishes, uh, yep. a little more of those weed eater marks, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but it's it's gorgeous, and it really matches the landscape around it. And it, it's beautiful. It's my favorite. I love it. Well, and since walnut covers a little bit better, it's also a really great choice if you have part of your fence that's already been installed. Yeah, And absolutely. then you're having a, so say your back line's already done, mm-hmm. and you're just finishing off both sides and over to the house. Yes. Uh, walnut would probably be a good choice. Now, it won't be exact. You no, know, you'll still true. be, if you if you yeah. walk right up to the fence and you look at it, you'll still notice the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, but from the deck, it's probably going to look pretty similar. Absolutely. It's, it's I would argue it's going to be your closest match for sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, if you were to use a lighter co- lighter color, you it would become more noticeable. It would. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, actually, Garrett and his crew did Jill's deck as well, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. Yep. And yep. it did turn out gorgeous. You're right, Jill. Beautiful. Yep. Yeah, it turned out so nice. So, thank you, thank Jill. Thank you, Jill. Oh. So, let's see. So, we're talking about stain. We're talking about colors. Uh, I had a question. Okay. And it left. <laughs> Maybe okay. it didn't leave, but it. Uh, just yeah, so we're talking about colors. We're talking about it was had something to do with the color stain. Pre staining. We're talking about that too. Yeah. Pre staining. Yeah, we did. Got some pre staining. So pre staining is probably my favorite, and we've yeah. talked about this almost every broadcast. But <laughs> just because it's so nice that when we go to complete the fence, it's already done. Yeah. Um, so you know, let's talk about this. So if if the fence Scott was installing today wasn't pre stained, mm-hmm. but they were wanting it stained. Yeah. Well, obviously, that fence is going to be wet at the end of today. Yes. So, 
it would probably take at least another well and it's supposed to rain majority of next week yep so you know if it if they wanted it stained and it wasn't pre-stained it would likely be several weeks before they could have that fence stained yes uh, if we pre-stain it you know like i said the guys or like you said the guys did a lot of pre-staining work yesterday mm -hmm. uh, so that when we go install those fences it's already done it's yeah, and it's dry too. I mean, that's another yeah. thing that's worth mentioning is it's not even leading up to that fence staining project. You also have to look at the weather directly after the staining is going to be complete too, because you certainly don't want it to rain the next day. Um, you you want to give that time to really dry as well. Well, you know, and I'll time. say this: so that's certainly what's in the training is for the next day. But I'll say this: and the stain seal guys are on. Michael's on. If you were to get a rainstorm, so it, it's an oil base, right? It's an oil based stain. So it actually goes in, soaks, and as long as the wood's dry, it can soak into the core. If it rains up to, you know, say a couple hours later, it's going to be pretty good. Yeah. So okay. that's one of the main benefits on oil versus the water. I mean, there's a lot of them, right? Sure. But uh, water, typically, water based stain has the long dry time. Okay. The, yeah. Where you want it, you need to give it a day, two days, three days. Uh, oil is going to be water repellent within a couple hours. Okay, so if we were able to complete the entire project in that day, maybe it wouldn't be a big deal then. Right. Okay, right, right. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, that's so great. we've Good to know. we've done a few projects where we stain the we stain the project in the morning, mm -hmm. and then it, you know how summertime goes. We have a pop up shower. Yeah. So that we stain happen. fence in the morning. Pop up shower comes that afternoon, and everyone just kind of collectively holds their breath, and. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we go back the next day, see if it needs touched up, see if it needs restained, and uh, luckily on both occasions it worked out. That's awesome. That's great. Oh, yeah. yes. The more you know. Rob Blevins, have no questions. Just a statement. Ozark oh. Fence does right by the community. They helped us with the emergency fencing to support kids and SPS on their virtual or virtual days. I love That's these awesome. people. Definitely the right people to trust. Hundred percent. Rob, thank you. Rob, that means a lot. Thank, thank you, you so much. So much. Great. So Rob is with the Discovery Center. So he heads oh, that's up. Amazing. Okay. Yeah, he heads up the team there at the Discovery Center, who has done an amazing job with oh. trying to help families with kids navigate, you know, the virtual learning environment while still having, you know, both parents having to work. Yeah. Where you know if the kids go to limited, you know, days of school, sure. The Discovery Center really stepped up to the plate uh, in the very beginning, and you know they started with. You know, first responders, childrens, that sort of thing. Yeah. And then, uh, but now, yeah, they opened it up to a lot more children there at uh, wow. there at Everest College. That's so, awesome. yeah, Rob, thank you. That's really great. Thank you for helping the community. I mean, that's helping the community is something that, I mean, it. We do it for a multitude of reasons, right? The big one being that it makes us feel great, you know, like it's that nice, warm feeling. Um, but two, this is a community that's that supported Ozark Fence. Yeah. For 65 plus years. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is if the community didn't put their trust in Ozark Fence by having us install fences for them and their businesses, I mean, we wouldn't be here today. So, Absolutely. you know, you need to make sure, need to make sure you complete that circle, right? You take yeah. care of those that take care of you. And, and I think that's an important message that gets lost a lot, you know, and, and we're not a big company. So, but we try to have, we try to have as big of an impact as we can. And, you know, so when Rob came to us and, and gave us his plan or he had talked to me briefly about the plan and I thought, you know what, this is a great opportunity. It's going to have a huge impact. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing Rob does incredibly well is, is he makes a lot out of a little. <laughs> so right. in a positive way, of course, but yeah. uh, Rob, thank you. That's awesome. I'm going to put this up here, but I'm not going to accept it. <laughs> I'll accept one, it. Thank you. Rob, one thing we don't do very well is accept things <laughs> like this. Like I, I'm going to do my best to turn it around yeah. and like give it back. Yeah. Well, I think it's worth mentioning too. I mean, the Discovery Center has been around a long time. They really have. I remember yeah. being a kid and going on yeah. field trips there <laughs> yep. and it was yeah. so great. And they had, uh, I mean, I'm sure you still do, but my favorite part was they had that little shopping market. Up yeah. at the very top. And yeah. a news broadcasting yes. station yes. where you could yeah, run your own right. broadcast. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, they had a little town. They have a little yeah. town up there. Yeah, it's oh, so cool. Man, that's, you're exactly right. Yeah. So when we take Macy and Jackson, like they enjoy the whole place, right? Yeah. But that's, oh. that, and Jackson's favorite, uh -huh. maybe a close second, <laughs> is the massive water table. Oh, okay. See, this thing, if you guys haven't been to Discovery Center, A, you need to go, and B, there's a water table that is 
gigantic. <laughs> like it is not a water table makes it sound small and it is not. What would you call that? Hmm. I don't yeah, I don't know. It's like an indoor pond. Okay. Maybe yeah. something That's like closer. that. Closer. Yeah. But what it does is it really helps kids understand, you know, hydrodynamics, like the That's how cool. water's going to react as it comes off a water like there's a little water wheel that turns and the water rushes down the table and then you can of course change it by putting uh, oh, gates yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. You can kind of dam it up and yeah, yeah divert flows around yeah. the table and yeah, so I anyway. about that? It's a lot of fun. And me as a parent, I need to make sure that he uses it responsibly. Uh, <laughs> and I need to show him the proper use of it. Uh -huh. You know, well, so sure. I like yeah. to I like to get in there with him and, and help <laughs> out. Some might say, like, if they didn't know me and all that, and they looked at it, they might say that I was a child playing on it and Jackson was trying to keep me out of trouble. <laughs> but obviously that. that's not the case. That's, I can see that's that. obviously not the case. <laughs> all right. All right. We all know who that is. We all know. Yes, yeah, me. Uh, yeah. Did you play horses in kindergarten at recess together? I mean, that was a long time ago. It's hard to remember <laughs> specifically. I mean, who knows? Like, that was such a long time ago. I, uh, uh -huh. I'm i just going to go ahead and take uh -huh. that down because okay. we know. Hello. We, we know. Hello, Olivia. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> all awesome. right. Bring, <laughs> bring, bring Deal. Wait a minute. All right. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so you know oh. and so let's talk for let's just a brief minute about what we do with the community yeah this is always a fine line right and that we try to be very active in the community absolutely just, like you said giving back to the community that's helped support you know our family and our business for the last 65 plus years and so we try to give back but it's always a weird thing about like how do you I don't like talking about it only because a lot of, a lot of, not a lot, some, some people you see in the community really go above and beyond to make sure everyone knows what they do. Right. 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 And, and that's fine. Yeah. That doesn't feel great to me. You know what I mean? Is yeah. it, it almost feels as though, you know, if doing that makes it feel like maybe you're doing it for the recognition. Yes. And that's obviously not, not what we want to do. So I usually err on the side of just not talking about it and just right. letting it go. But yeah, so we do, we work with a few area organizations. Mm -hmm. Um, so we each really kind of have a passion project. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So why don't you talk a second about what your passion project is? Yeah. Yeah. So, and I would say I, I even share it with Jim too. The, so I help a lot with um, a sporting chance. And we talked a little bit about it last week. Yeah. So it, it really helps any individual with disabilities. And I say any individual because it's children, I mean, ages, I think it's four through really life. Um, anyone that's ever wanted to play sports, but maybe didn't get that chance. So it can be an intellectual disability. It can be a physical disability, um, really anything. They have different different seasons, I would say. So they have bowling in winter. Uh, in the spring, they have a big track meet. And so they do track and it's in Branson and people from all over the state come to this and it's great. And they get to go to shows and just take field trips that maybe weren't ever an option for them um, throughout their entire life. So like I said, I mean, we have, we have people in the community that utilize this organization that are in their 60s that are wow. loving it. That uh, my... My, I guess, thing at the track me is the softball toss. Okay. So they love that. And it's so cool to see just everyone come together and it's really supportive. And so you've got track, you've got softball. Um, so what is, what is the softball toss? So softball toss, um, it's, I forget the name of like the Olympic event, um, okay. but where they throw those really, really heavy balls. Okay. And they throw yeah. them as far as they can. Right. So the softball toss, the whole, um, the whole objective of it is to see just how far you can toss it. So they put us in this big field and they get three different chances. And so the best one gets notated. Um, and then, yeah, so we have volunteers that help us too that go and measure it. So they'll throw it and then they'll run and measure it and they'll tell us, you know, 100 feet. We're like, all right, 100 feet. And everyone's just really supportive and it's really cool. But they That's have amazing. all kinds of different events at that track meet. So they've got, you know, your sprinters, your long distance, um, anything that you would see at a high school track meet. You know, it's pretty cool. It's cool Excellent. to see 
all of those. Uh, they have softball as well. Okay. And so I've been involved in the softball, and it's amazing. Uh, this year, I'm going to be a basketball coach. Okay. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be so much fun, but it's Absolutely. really cool organization to be a part of. Um, Dick Jones does an amazing job running it. So him and our dad have been friends forever, uh, but he's just he's really great. So it's it's really cool to see someone so passionate about the cause and give back to his community as well. And yeah. it's really neat to be able to be a part of such an incredible organization. And so we we're really happy to to be a sponsor in a lot of their events and you know, sponsor basketball teams and that sort of thing. Um, they do have a Christmas raffle that's coming up that's for Bass right. Pro. That's so right. I'm gonna I'll be sharing more about that as time comes. But yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of my biggest my biggest passion there. And it's it's been really incredible. Well and you're also active with Isabel's house. Yes. Is that right? Absolutely. So Isabel's house um, helps with and it's kinda hard to explain. So they help with families that they just, maybe they're in a rough time or they get put in a financial situation where there are items that, I mean, it's kind of two part where they also help a lot of families that are still in their own house um, that are needing items. And so okay. maybe it's, they need, you know, they just, they don't have the money for diapers and that sort of thing. Isabel's house is a really good job of empowering those parents too and not making them feel like a burden, but of, hey, here's, this is what a community is about. Here's what we all rally together and we all support each other. Um, they also have a facility where they do keep children if for some reason the parents, um, maybe they have an, another child that's going through a medical crisis and they just need okay. someone to care for their child. Um, and it can be just a plethora of different disasters that happen or, you know, in the past there have been families that maybe have lost their house in a house fire. Okay. And so they just, they they have a place for themselves, but they're like, man, my, my kids just, they need that extra attention. They need, you know, that sort of thing. And Isabel's house is an amazing job. And their whole purpose is to reunite those families. So it's never to right. take the kids away, nothing like that. It's always sure. to reunite them and just give them the support that they need, whether that's, you know, medical, emotional, anything like that. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's amazing. It's incredible. Um, they, they're really a great organization, and they really care about the kids too. So you'll, you'll start hearing a lot of, there's a trend on that, I would say on our hearts, <laughs> you know, supporting the kids in our community sure. and both of those organizations do such an incredible job and really happy to be a part of them. Well, so, and, and so let's, so I'll talk about a couple of mine. So yeah. I'm a member of Springfield Sertoma and the, what got me involved with Sertoma is the fact that they help a wide range of children's charities. Right. And so primarily boys and girls club, but you also have, you know, so each each year, this year is going to be a little different. So we put on events, and we put on a Wing of Palooza, which yes, Wing of Palooza is a little <laughs> bit different this year. So it would have been November seventh, but right now the chances of getting a few thousand people in the same room are probably not a Oof, good idea. Yeah, you know, it's probably true. not a great idea. So uh, we're selling booklets to where you can go to the cool. restaurants and get the wings that you would have gotten in person. Anyway, so okay. we put on Wing of Palooza. Uh, and then in February, we, along with uh, two other Sertoma groups in town, put on the chili cook-off. Yes. Uh, and that's still kind of up in the air. We're still okay. kind of waiting to see what, yeah, what happens on. there. But, okay. And yeah. so then, so, but that money, so the money that were, was raised, uh, Wing of Palooza, chili cook-off, when we do a few other events throughout the year, we do uh, prom, which unfortunately I uh, got canceled. It was then pushed to Monster Bash, uh, oh, okay. which... Also had to get canceled because <laughs> we're still kind of in yeah. the same situation. But um, but we put on events. We have a good time, and we raise money for kids. And then at the end of the year, we do a gifting where we'll take uh, we'll take applications from area organizations, not for profits that help children specifically. You know, and it can be like I said, anything from Boys and Girls Club to uh, you know Diaper Bank of the Ozarks comes to mind. Okay. Um, yeah. Just really any sort of uh, children's charity can can apply. So that's what drew me to Springfield Sertoma because the problem yeah. is there's so many great organizations just in our local area, you know, Absolutely. just in Southwest Missouri, you know, because the need is there, right? Yeah. And each one handles the needs in a little bit different way. Yeah. And if you were one person or one organization trying to make an impact, it, it would feel like it's a drop in the bucket, you know, a drop of water in a hundred buckets, yeah. you know, you really wouldn't feel but by getting involved in an organization like Springfield Sertoma, we're able to have what I feel like is a bigger impact. You know? Absolutely. Um, we That's also cool. like helping out Community Foundation of the Ozarks. Yes. Yeah. Because through 
through Community Foundation of the Ozarks, you can have a really big impact. Absolutely. Because they impact, they help a multitude of other organizations. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of them are children's charities, but not necessarily children's charities, yeah. right? So anyway, Springfield Sertoma is really big to me, uh, along with Community Foundation of the Ozarks, um, just because we can try to have an impact on a multitude of different uh, organizations. Yeah. So. That's awesome. I said it was going to be really quick in like 30 <laughs> seconds or a minute. Unfortunately, that is my version of quick. Yep. We're very <laughs> passionate about this. I, yep. We, absolutely. That was a short version. Yes. Oh, we have some people asking about raffle tickets. <laughs> right. Well, first, first, first. Oh. Kim, we miss you Hello, too. Hello, Kim. Hello, Kim. Miss you. Hope you're doing well. And I think she got it right. Is that the event shot, shot put? For what? For oh, the yes. Softball yes. Toss. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought, I thought it was shout out. And I was like. We'll give you a shout out too. Hi, Kim. I'm sorry. No, no, no. She was trying to help us <laughs> yeah, you're uh, right. guess the That's event. exactly right. Yeah. And they have to, normally they spin around, but in this case, they don't have okay. to spin around. Right, right, right. Which is good. But it's I a version of it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Shop it. Perfect. Thank you, Kimberly. All right. You're going to have to get with Tracy. <laughs> All right. I love this. it. All right. Brent has a good question. So Brent's talking about, this no. is when you were talking about it. You absolutely don't have to live raffle. in the area. Okay. Nope. Nope. So um, Brent, send me an email and I'll get you the information on those raffle tickets. What's your email? So Sarah at ozfence.com. And then the Sarah does have an H on it. Yep. So, so S-A-R-A-H absolutely. at the letters O-Z, the word fence.com. Perfect. Love it. Thank, Thank you. you, Brent. All right. My man, Greg. What's up, Greg? Hey, Greg. So Greg is in the CSA to sales right. group with right. me. He's awesome. Um, he's a really good soundboard. If I have something, I'm like, man, I just had this really great idea, but I it sounds great in my head, but I don't know <laughs> if it sounds good in anyone else's head. Yeah. You know, yeah. Greg's a great soundboard. So he's awesome. So a lot of the customer service things that you see, you know, come from groups like that where I'm like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Does anyone else implement this practice? Yeah. They're like, yeah, we do. And we have great success. Awesome. It's really incredible. So that's what happens when you when you ask that. <laughs> when I ask that, it's usually like, well, okay. Uh, we see where you're headed with that. Yeah. But. <laughs> Love where your head's at. Yeah. I, but have you thought about X, Y, and Z? And uh -huh. I go, oh. I have now. Yeah. You know what my favorite <laughs> answer is? It When someone tells me an idea that I may not agree with, I just, I go, well, that's an idea. And, it, and sometimes you just have to leave it there. And I think, I think they get the gist, but, but luckily Greg is not like that. And Greg gives really great advice. But now I know that. He's been told that a time or two. I'm like, that is an idea. And then. And then normally you come back and it's a better idea. You I, know? Always it that was there. <laughs> I always thought that it was positive. I always thought that was positive. there. He goes, okay, but what about this but more? And I'm like, there it is. Love it. Now you know. <laughs> better or worse. Giving up secrets. <laughs> What's up, Jordan? Oh, thanks, Jordan. We appreciate that. We appreciate that. it. Well, Absolutely. yeah, we, we appreciate it, Jordan. And it's one of those things where it's the least we can do. Yeah. Right? So... Yeah, I mean, it's a community that we both grew up in, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah so absolutely. It's given us so many opportunities, and it's it's a really great feeling to be able to give that back. Well, now it's a community that my kids live in. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so that's one thing we did um, during the pandemic. I guess technically we're still in pandemic. So early yeah. days of pandemic yep. is, uh, you know, so we also have a washing division, yes. a clean and seal division. So one thing we did was uh, we cleaned the – my kids, we live in Republic. Mm -hmm. So went and cleaned all the Republic – elementary school playgrounds because I thought, you know, I want to make sure it's safe for my kids and, and all the other little kiddos running around. Absolutely. And uh, we also did some daycares through Community Foundation of the Ozarks. So. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, support but, the community that supports you. Absolutely. Yeah, they're incredible. Right. So I think she's laughing at you. <laughs> I think so. I she's fair. laughing at That's you. Uh, obviously, I laugh at myself all Definitely time. not laughing at me. All right. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. Man. bit of a tangent. Bit yeah, but it feels feels good. Yeah. You want to talk? Does. Okay, so it speaking does. of community, okay. why don't you talk to them about what we're doing next Friday? So next Friday, it, so we're doing, we're one of the uh, one of the companies that's participating in Track or Treat out at the Ooh. Springfield Cardinals. Okay, Track or Treat. Track or Treat. I like that. So yeah. what it is, is they have pods, so groups that go every 10 minutes or so, and that way everyone's properly spaced out, lots of distance, that sort of thing. Okay. And it's a, it's a Halloween trick or treat, oh, you know, cool. so the kids okay. will walk. So the tents will be spaced out around the warning track. Uh, good distances apart, of course. Yeah. And then the groups of kids will come through and uh, 
we put candy on the table, and then the kids pick candy up off the table. That way, very we're trying cool. to again keep distance. Distance is very important. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that way, it you know. So Dan sent out an e- Dan Ryder with the Cardinals sent out an email to some of the advertisers and partners, and and as soon as I saw the email from Dan, I was like, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Because I mean, a lot of places trick or treat, you know, it's canceled. Yeah. You know, we we participated in a few trick or treat events last year. My favorite was at the uh, zoo because we got to help got to help the zoo out. The zoo's yes. another uh, like passion of ours. Yep. Um, but which makes sense, they had to cancel it because there wasn't a great way to maintain that distance, distance between groups. Yeah. 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 yeah that makes sense. So. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but this That'd is a way fun. for so yeah, so kids can get their trick or treating in so in cool. a safe and responsible way. Yeah. And uh, yeah, safe environment, obviously. So absolutely. as soon as I saw that, I saw that that makes so much sense. Let's <laughs> like, do I it. Yes, yes, absolutely. So unfortunately, so like I said, this it goes in groups, right? And so okay. there's only yeah. it goes from four to nine next Friday. But unfortunately, they so they had to take reservations. Yeah. Right. They sense. had to make sure they knew exactly who was going to be there when, and that way they knew you know which pod, you know, how many people in pods and that sort of thing. Uh, so there's a limited availability. And unfortunately, they're full. Yeah. So the first Almost. group of pods, they. I don't want to say sell out, so it's a free event, but they filled up uh, okay. in like an hour and a half. Which, it makes sense. It's a cool facility. <laughs> it it's is. great. It's beautiful and a safe environment. That's yep. awesome. So then they extended the event and added oh. another 30 pods. Okay. And those, I think I think the email said something like those filled up in like three minutes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, so <poor> it's, front desk. <laughs> oh, I can't imagine. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, the event's full Yeah. for this year. But... If you did register, if you did get the chance to register and you are coming out, come see us. Absolutely. Can't miss yeah. the big orange tent That's and the true. flags, the Ozark fence. Yeah. So, yeah, come by and say hi. Say, Absolutely. hey, Joe, you're my favorite. I watch you all the time on live. Uh, Sarah's okay, too. I don't want to say that, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, so Kimberly, so there's always a delay between, re, you know, yep, responses. responses. So yep. this is when we were talking about that. So, um, generosity. Awesome. So thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. We really appreciate it. Okay, this is fun. So excited to see your side show of opening cards. Hoping to see oh. some great ones for your son. So yeah. I recently started a YouTube channel uh, called Pinnacle Finds, and it's all about just me opening baseball cards so that, I mean, Jackson's three. So he is not handling sports cards right now, <laughs> uh, not for the yeah. not for the foreseeable future. You know, until he gets a little bit older and a little bit, you know, he can appreciate him, all that. But so so some of my best memories with our dad is when we were doing sports card stuff. So I thought, you know what, let's let's get this going now, so that when he is old enough, we can have a great collection. So you want to hand me one of those? Absolutely. So this is actually also the Pinnacle Fine Studio. So the these are the cards. So this is a ninety one Donruss or ninety two Donruss series one. These are like the cards I opened up as a kid, and it's a foil pack. So this yeah. is like one of the first one of the first foil packs I remember before they were always kind of that that like waxy paper kind of. Yeah. Okay. So this is like yeah. a legit foil, and they were color on both sides. Oh. So That's we'll be cool. opening opening these up soon. So. Here's the thing. So a lot of so this whole box was twenty dollars. Wow. Because so hand me one of those other ones, like the, the white one. one. Yeah. In comparison, like this box. Oh wow. Two hundred fifty dollars. Huh. So you buy who, one of these. <laughs> who we got on here? Are these like so, current players? Yeah, yeah. So let's see. A 2020 trading cards. Okay. Yeah, so they're okay. Bowman Chrome. So Bowman's going to be, and Jordan probably knows more about this than I do, but it's going to be more your prospects. So oh, we're up and coming guys. Like your farming system. Kind of. Kind of yeah, it's not so much farm. So it's like AAA, like up and coming. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but yeah. That's but, really cool. So this, the reason they're expensive is because they have cards that could be worth significant money. Yeah. In 92 Donruss, there's not a lot of that. You yeah. know, there's, I looked it up. So there's a handful of cards that are all worth you know, maybe ten dollars, fifteen dollars. Okay. But for yeah. me, and for for me, it's going to be opening these up and like reliving, like when I was a kid and opening yep. them up. So there's that nostalgia, and it's going to be neat to show Jackson. I mean, I can't I can't imagine what sports cards are going to look like six years from now, five years from now. Yep. So it'll be neat to show him 
hey, this is these were exciting cards when I was when your I was age. A kid. Yeah. <laughs> now look at these, you know, to do the comparison. So, um, you know, you see some guys in some channels which teach their own. They're really big on opening and selling, right? So okay. they they open, and then they flip what they sell, or they flip what they find. For us, it's more of a you find it and you treasure it and you hold it. Cool. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'll put those back yeah. over there. That's now, a, what were the cards that you used to collect that were in the green boxes? Do you remember that they were really skinny green boxes? Yeah, those was, those were baseball cards. Yeah, okay. yeah. So so we used to keep them in the in the long yeah, yeah like card logs holders, almost. the cardboards, yeah. and they were green for baseball. Yes. And, I tell you what, if I could find those boxes, they I, would. There would probably be some good ones in there. Probably. I bet they're in the Maybe. attic. Maybe they might I be. Bet, in the I attic. bet they're still in the so attic. Yeah. We'll have to do a had to just search video for it. Yep. <laughs> there you go. A little tangent. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. So this is actually exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're gonna have a booth at Track and Treat, and it's uh, like I said, a week so from cool. today, four to nine. So Jeff, if you're gonna be there, yeah, come say hi. Come say please. hi. And like I said, be sure to say, Joe, you're my favorite. And Sarah, you're okay too. No, I mean, make okay. sure you tell, you know, you can don't, don't just only say me. <laughs> now, here's the question. Okay. Is Dan going to let us dress up? Yeah. Okay. Dressing okay. up is encouraged. So, so when I, I used to work at the Springfield Cardinals. For okay. those of you who didn't know, okay. did kind of like an internship yeah. through college and just stayed with it for like three years because I had so much fun <laughs> doing it. It was great. Um, but part of our job was getting the contestants on the field for those fun activities. Yeah. You get to go pick the people and get them excited, make sure they're there at the right time. And incredible organization. Everything is to the second. It's <laughs> amazing. They do an incredible job. Yeah. But on one of the nights, it was a it was like Halloween in July. And so they they told all of us, they're like, hey, it's it was like princesses and uh, like Marvel or something like that. It okay. was kind of a theme. Um and so all of the gals in my group all dressed up as these princesses. And I, like, showed up as Catwoman. And I was the <laughs> only one dressed up as, like, a superhero. But, oh, my gosh, I had so much fun. I was, like, running around with a tail. And like, it was so much fun. It was awesome. And the kids loved it. And they're really cool. They do a really good job of getting everyone involved. So that does not surprise me that that's encouraged. So that's awesome. Is that a sneak peek into your <sighs> what you're wearing next Friday? Close. Okay. Close. Okay. Okay. Yep. We we'll leave it at that. We'll yep. leave it at that. I'm gonna try to find mine from last year. I don't remember what yours was. It was orange. Oh, oh. I mean I do, shocking. I think I do remember this. It was inflatable. Yep. yep. I remember now. So I'm gonna try to find it because it's in a very safe place. <laughs> it's in a very safe place. I have I have a feeling Taylor has hidden it to or keep me from wearing it. it like every day. Or at trade shows. I don't know. I've given him this idea. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, that would be fun, though. In trade show, that is that's okay. Yeah. We're going to file that back there because what I usually do is wear like this orange blazer and yeah, a top, and top hat, hat. But very, very similar to Dumb and Dumber. Easy. It's a good idea, and it's very memorable. We talked about this last week. The reason we do orange yeah. is because it's memorable, and yeah. it makes a good first impression. Um, I have never fought anyone with a cane <laughs> at okay. the trade show. All right. I mean, I'm, there's other times, but at the trade show in public, <laughs> never fought anyone never, with a cane. Never in your orange top hat. Got Not it. ever. Okay. So. That's fair. All right. Let's see. Oh. -ho. Dan, I'm going to need you to uninvite him from the tracker treat. Thank don't do you. it. Don't do it. Thank you. Put him on my Effective list. immediately. Put him on, nope. Put him on my list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. You got it. We're gonna go try to find some baseball. That'd be awesome. Are you kidding me? That's right. That's right. Kimmy you misspelled Joe. <laughs> just, just say that. Oh man. Oh. Uh -oh. Okay. Here we go. You have to ask Zach Pemberton about it. But <laughs> once I ended up on the kiss cam at the Springfield's Cardinals game, he was on for like 30, 40 seconds. The girl I took there, we didn't kiss. Oh, that's awkward. Uh, it was awkward, and the announcer ended up saying, and that's why you don't bring your brother to the ball game. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, yep. it's funny and cringy, like, at the same oh, yeah. time. Absolutely. I am definitely going to ask Zach about that. <laughs> I am 100%. Actually, see if he still has the footage. There you go. I bet they, they do. I'm sure they I store that footage do. forever. Yeah. 
That would make a great like Christmas Perfect. gift. That'd be awesome. So, Gordon, coming your way soon. You know Don't what's you coming. Worry. <laughs> <laughs> I had a similar situation at the PBR. I went with okay. one of my best guy friends, Tyler, and oh yeah, I was sitting in the area so- section and yeah, the kiss kit, but they kept coming back. And we're like, still no. <laughs> but yeah, that is, it is super awkward, especially it was a work event. And oh, so no. all of our coworkers are texting us, go, we saw you. And we're like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so I feel your pain, Jordan. I feel your pain. Ouch. All right. So let's try to get this train back on track. Yeah. All right. Fences. Got fences. it. Fences. Okay. Talking about fences. Um, so what else should we talk about? So we talked about we've talked about weather affecting because that's kind of what we're going through right now. Of course, next week, all rain looks like pretty much all week cool. Yes. So we'll probably be making use of the flex day on Wednesday. Oh yeah, absolutely. Keep everything on track, but yep. you know because things things just don't go as quickly. I mean, you guys surely understand. I mean, you're wearing rain gear, but you're still getting wet. Yep. You're not going to be operating at 100. percent I wouldn't. Yeah. So. We'll probably use Wednesday to flex a little bit, flex get flexible with the schedule a little bit. Um, yeah. So, but we should still stay on track. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually putting in a lot of uh, black chain link. We talked about that last week. Putting that's in right. quite a bit of that here in the next couple of weeks, which is awesome. Yeah. That's the thing. So it, it's funny how like things come in cycles, yes. right? So we'll go for, we'll go for months without doing any black coated or color coded chain link, yeah. uh, you know, green or brown or anything. And then for like, Two weeks straight. That's all we get asked all about. All we can do is, yeah. is yeah. black coated, green coated, brown coated chain link. Yeah. Um, awesome. I mean, we don't, we do it. We absolutely yeah. install it and, and I enjoy it. It looks really, really nice. It does. But it's just funny how it just kind of comes in cycles. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Well, and they're all kind of rural projects. So it does make sense. Kind of goes back yeah. to the doesn't take away from your scenery and that sort of thing. So yeah. well, I was talking to a guy cool. uh, yesterday about it. They were wanting a black coated chain link. Yeah. And uh, that was specifically why was they wanted it to kind of blend in with their surroundings. They had a yeah. large property, but they obviously didn't want to get the dogs the free reign of the whole thing. So doing yeah. a, you know, a dog containment area there in the back. And uh, but specifically when we were talking about why black coated chain link, it was because they wanted it to blend in. Makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of what we've got coming down the pipeline there. Yeah. Quite a bit of wood. So yes. uh, production meetings this afternoon. We'll talk about it a little bit more in detail, but where are we at as far as scheduling for for wood? Uh, so that last week in November, and by that I mean really the first week in December. Okay. So November 30th is that Monday. And gotcha. then it goes into December. So we're right about six weeks. About six weeks out. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's pretty standard, pretty typical for yeah. this time of year. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, so right. still get that fence in for Christmas, though. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Still get in for Christmas. And, yeah. you know, and right now, so as we get into wintertime, six weeks is still pretty standard as far as it would have been standard for summer, you yeah. know, scheduling. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Usually through the fall and through the winter, we'll start seeing that schedule come back. Yeah. Uh, usually four, four weeks. Four, yeah. Four in there. Yeah. So, yeah, if you've been wanting a fence, and, you know, that would probably be a pretty good time because you'll start seeing schedule come back a little bit. Um, depending on a few different situations, the weather and, um, we might be doing, we might be offering a winter special and kind of depends on a few things. We're going to wait and see if a few things come together. Yep. 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 That's right. So yeah, it's, it's been going good. So I'm, I'm really happy with it. The guys are happy with it and you couldn't ask for, you know, more than that. Make it, everyone's happy. Yep. Knock on wood. So let's talk about a scenario that came up. Uh, came up for us uh, yesterday, actually. So, and mm-hmm. it was in regards to surveying properties. Yes. So, we had installed a fence. Uh, we installed a fence. We actually, for, this was a property that I own that uh, me and a, a couple other guys own. It's a rent house, a rental house. It's actually right by our office. Oh. Um, so, one of the things, one of my contributions is we build a fence. We built, we, every rental house has a fence because yeah. um, we want to keep kids safe and no one run away. So, uh, we had, but before doing this, I built enough fence to know kind of the do's and don'ts. So we had it surveyed. I wanted to know exactly, we couldn't find any of the pins, couldn't do any of that. So we had it surveyed, We know, exactly where it was, you know, all our boundary lines were. Uh, and so we built a fence actually. So because of how the trees were, we built a fence about, about 14, 15 inches inside the property line okay. just to avoid some pretty big trees. And it's a, it's a good sized yard anyway. Um, that was two years ago. Yeah. So, 
Uh, it's been there for a while. I get a call yesterday saying, Hey, you guys, uh, well, it's funny. So it came in that you guys had recently installed a fence, uh, and it hit and it backs up to one of my rental houses. So this, the person's calling to rental houses. And, uh, when you guys installed it, you hit my sewer line and now I'm going to need you to help pay for it. Oh, what, what address is it? And oh, so he yeah, gave me an one? address. Yeah. 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 He gave me an address and it was on Olive street. And I thought, wait a minute, Olive street. Like that's right here. I said, what, well, what's across street? And he said, well, it's forest. And I said, wait a minute. I know. I said, I know exactly hmm. which house we're talking about. Yeah. Well, let's go over and take a look at it. Well, he ended up sending over his property manager. Well, come to find out, like I said, this, this, the fence is about 12, 13, 14 inches inside the property line. Okay. And the plumber was still there, you know, surveying the damage. And, and he had showed us that the post had hit the sewer line. Now we installed it two years ago. Mm -hmm. So my thinking is if this was going to be a problem, surely it would have been a problem before now, but I said, well, it could have been a slow blockage. And so I said, well, here, riddle me this. There's not an easement. So that was one of the first things we looked at. So when you close on a property, the, the title agency goes through and make sure you know of any easements, anything like that. No easements. Yeah. Um, so I said, well, the funny thing is, and it's not funny, I guess, but uh, so that means your plumbing's on our property. Hmm. So what do we do now? And, you know, kind of one thing turned into another, and we kind of both agreed that we wouldn't be helping pay for this. And But the funny part of the story is, so one, the life lesson is, Make sure you know where all your property pins are. Yes, always a good idea. If we hadn't known exactly where they were, and if I hadn't hired the surveyor to come survey the property, I wouldn't have known, A, where the property line was, and B, I wouldn't have been exactly sure that that plumbing was on my property. Like, Well, I mean, yeah. maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So, uh, but, the, but the funny part of the story is they said, they said a fence you had recently installed. I said, well, that's weird. I went out there said, and we're looking at this fence. I said, well, that, that fence is two years old. He says, no, 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 not that fence. That fence is new. I remember <laughs> this fence. I It was February or March of, you know, 2018. Well, we had stained and sealed it this spring. Oh, so it so looks we, like a pre-stained new We fence. had gone through okay. and cleaned it and stained it. And it actually yeah. looks like, <laughs> once I stepped back and looked at it, I was like, well, it does look like a fairly recent fence. Yeah. So, so if you're saying your fence, you know, two years later, someone could mistakenly think it's, it's a, a new, new fence. fence. Yeah. So, yeah. But well, moral of the story is make sure you know where your property pins are before absolutely. you do work on your property. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's there's only so much that, you know, the public GIS um, online. So yeah. for those of you who don't know, um, depending on what county you are involved in. So if you're in green or Christian, you can go online and they have a GIS, uh, which is a plot map kind of for the whole county. And you can find your address and it'll tell you what your plot dimensions are. Yeah. And so a lot of times if the customer is like, you know, I know it's here. I, I know it is. We can use a device. It's like a, almost like a metal detector, really. Yeah. Kind yeah. of kind of a and, souped up metal detector. Yeah. Yeah. And so we can try to locate it, dig, see if we can find it. Um, by all means, we are not surveyors. <laughs> right. Uh, but I say that to say, if you just have no idea where your property lines are, it's a good tool to use to say, oh, okay, I didn't know that this was the shape of my my property. Yep. You know, here's where it should be, maybe. And, of course, there's always a margin of error, you know, for everything. Yeah, because there's a satellite, satellite overlay. Yes. So yes. it kind of gives you the Google satellite view yeah. of your home, and it kind of superimposes the property lines on it. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so while it gives you a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, kind of a good idea of where to look for your property pens. A lot of times, uh, builders bury them, so they are sure. with it. You know, a metal detector. You you can sometimes find them. Yeah, and they're not buried on purpose. So no. what generally happens is the level of the yard is brought up. Mm -hmm. You know, to kind of yeah. level the yard, take yeah, low spots out for anything like that. Yeah, too. and so yeah. the pin that was there now the finished soil covers up. So uh, yeah. sometimes they're four six inches deep. Yeah. Well, and you have to think too. These are like pieces of basically rebar that are, yeah. you don't want to hit them with a lawnmower by any means. Right. So it makes sense that you would want to learn, preserve them, sure. that sort of thing. But in some cases, people do remove them. And so that's where you would want a surveyor to come out, survey it, and then give you your property corners. Always a good idea. Yep. And it lets you know where they are, and it lets your neighbors know that you know where they are, that you've done your due diligence, that the fence is getting placed appropriately on the property, that sort of thing. So um, how do you find the, how do you find this software? Like if, if I didn't know anything about okay. the GIS system, yeah. how would I find it? 
So you would just go to, like, let's say, for instance, I'm in Greene County. So I would go to the Greene County Assessor's website, which I just Google it, um, and it'll pop up, you know, their their site. And then I believe it's on generally for Stone, Green, and Christian. It's always on, on the left-hand side. It'll say um, GIS, which is just your geographical map system. And so it'll actually pop up. You have to have Adobe, um, but it'll pop up a kind of a, a bigger map and it'll ask you for your, so there will be a place where you can type in your address. Okay. And there might be from the homepage. You might be able to do that too. Sure. I've just kind of always breadcrumb it. Um, but yeah, you type in your address and it pops it up. Uh, yeah. You can look by, in Greene County, you can look by your address, um, by your name. So if you have multiple uh, properties that you want to look at all of them, you can do it that way. Uh, so I do it by, or you can just zoom in from the map. Yeah. So in a lot of cases, if like, for instance, I, I have some acreage, so it tries to drop you at the very corner of mine. So it's easier for me to go ahead and use a map because I know what, you know, what side roads and that sort of thing. Sure. But, but yeah, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, I utilize it all the time in all of our projects. It's just an, always a good idea to know, you know, our, our customers know where the property pins are, but here's a map mm -hmm. in case maybe a neighbor does have a question sure. and you can say, Hey, here's the pin here, but we also have a map provided by the County yeah. to do this. And it told, it tells us exactly how far off this pin, the next pin should be. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it'll give you your, your dimensions as far as width and length. So it, it's very, very nice. And it, it's fun to play around with too. Yeah. Right. It tells you owners too. So yep. a lot of people have used it for um, finding out who their neighbors are, maybe to okay. contact their neighbors. That happens quite a bit too. Um, sure. So yeah, it's a great tool. I really like it. There you go. So the way I usually get to it is I usually just Google the county and then GIS. Mm -hmm. Green County GIS, Christian County GIS. Um, yeah. Pulls it right up. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the, the smaller town or smaller counties um webster's a little harder to navigate but i just yeah. use the map function and you can you can find you know where your house is at so yeah. pretty easy to find yeah. Yeah. we have a comment hello from saint seal icebergs <laughs> caleb wants to know if you want a celebrity to come on sure mandy come on <laughs> Wait, i was gonna say like well there's only room for two <laughs> i mean we got Ooh, sarah and i here we could do a girls only edition Ask your fence mm. gals Friday. No plural. Yeah, fence gals. Fence gals. I like that. So Caleb, sure. Yeah, send Man Mandy on up. That'd be great. <laughs> Which actually, <laughs> so we're using a software called uh, StreamYard. Uh, actually, StreamYard is really good at bringing people in. Oh, yeah. that'd be kind of fun. So, though. like, yeah. actually, Maybe legitimately, cool uh, yeah. we might we might set that up. That would be really. That would be an interesting um, video too, just to show the pre-stain process. That would be really yeah. cool. Sure, sure. A lot of people don't really know what goes into it. I didn't before I saw the actual machine, and it's an yeah. incredible machine. Sure, I, sure. I love it. Very therapeutic to watch it go. Uh, <laughs> sure. But, yeah, it, it'd be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Kind of take you so, live and see the process. So, Mandy, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, we're yeah. we're right around an hour, and then we like to keep it right around here. So I'll do this. I'll, I'll call uh, last call for questions or comments. And we know that the video runs about 10 seconds behind, so yeah. uh, we'll give it a little bit. So while we do that, I'll ask you, Sarah, what do you got planned this weekend? Oh, what do I have planned this weekend? Well, Macy is going to spend the night. We're going to go to uh, Nixa has a play. Okay. So they're doing, and it's, of course, socially distanced and everything, uh, but we're going to the play. I don't know the name of the play, but oh, no. I watched the video. It looks really cool. Okay. Love theater. So uh, it's actually Macy's first play, which yeah. is cool. Yeah gonna be exciting um so yeah we're gonna do that and then uh we have a movie night in the backyard tomorrow with some family friends of ours so we'll, we'll okay. be involved in as well yep. yeah yep. we're going to that yeah. yeah so we're gonna make a spooky dessert for that oh spooky dessert yeah. so i'm gonna pinterest it but if anyone else has any ideas for spooky desserts also send them my way comments below yes. put them in the comments yeah. not very creative <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's about it yeah awesome what about you not much. Um, so tonight, there's literally nothing scheduled. Um, we, well, I say that. We have some friends coming over. Sure. We've got Dylan and Nicole coming over oh, for a little fun. bit. And then, uh, yeah, so Macy is going to be with you guys. Mm -hmm. Jackson is going to be with his, so with Jill. Okay, Jim. yeah, that was on earlier. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're going to be kid-free tonight. Oh, getting we, crazy. We might get pretty crazy and stay up past dark. <laughs> Watch out. Ah. <laughs> It could get Watch crazy. It. it could get crazy. Huh. But, uh, but yeah, and then, we, like I said, we've got some friends having, you had mentioned we have friends having a uh, an outside 
movie yeah. night. Yeah. So that way we can all stay distanced and all that. And uh, looking forward to that, as long as it doesn't, like, you know, trenchly downpour. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and Sunday don't have much. I don't know that we have much planned at all. Yeah. I haven't been told nice. that we're doing much, but uh, I'm yep. sure Taylor has everything pretty well planned out. She's the yep. planner of uh, of our little family group. Yeah. And she just points me in the right direction and tells me to get moving. That's <laughs> the way to do it. All right. Brent, you have a great yeah. weekend as well. I appreciate you sticking around for this. I mean. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Week week to week and, you know, for the last hour or so. Yeah. Appreciate you. Thank you. Oh. Let's do it. So All we're right. going to set up a, we'll set up a live interview in the coming weeks. That'll be awesome. Uh, yeah, with, with Caleb and Mandy. Because, Mandy, Mandy, you're yep. getting drug into this, too. <laughs> so that's Love just it. what you get for typing the comment. You've committed to it now. Yep. So, and that'll be, that'll be kind of neat. So it'll be Caleb, Mandy, and Joe and Sarah. And yeah, that'll that. be fun. Jeff, you rock. Thank you, Jeff. No, no you're not supposed to accept oh. it. You're supposed to give it back. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Taryn and her group are getting oh, ready to head to Trunk yeah. and Treat. First thing we've been able to do since March. It, it, this That's the thing. is These events are going to be so great just as an outlet to Absolutely. go feel somewhat normal. Yeah. You know, yeah. in a socially distanced environment and all that, but feel somewhat normal. That's, uh, well, you know. Because we understand it as adults. You yeah. know, we get what's going on. We understand why those precautions are being taken. But the kids, I mean... That's hard to explain to yeah, a kiddo, right. you know, why you don't get to do the fun things you did before. And well, yeah. So, you know, so Jackson's three. So he doesn't really know much different, right? Yeah. So he doesn't really know. This is his normal, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Macy, Macy's going on 12. So yeah. it's very abnormal for her, you know. And I mean, kids are resilient. Don't get me wrong. But it affects them. Well, sure. You know, it, it absolutely yeah. has an effect you know, whether they talk about it or not, it absolutely does. So, Taryn, have fun at your trunk and treat. Yes, give those kiddos that, a hug for us. So, so Taryn, for those that – Taryn's been on the channel before, left lots of comments. We appreciate you. So, Taryn is my sister-in-law. Yeah. She's Taylor's sister. So. That will be fun. Yep. Spoil those kids. Give them more candy than you think they need just because <laughs> I'm not there and all that. So, didn't uh -huh. just say it's from Joe. <laughs> Mandy, you have a great weekend yeah, as well. Guys, awesome. we have a lot of fun doing this. Yes. We really do. And, awesome. um, you know, this is what, third, fourth one, something third like one. that. Yeah. yeah. So um, we enjoy doing it, and you guys are the reason we do it, right? So thank you for coming and sticking with us and uh, coming and going throughout the broadcast, which is Absolutely. completely kind of what's expected. Yeah. Uh, but more than anything, we appreciate you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Appreciate you commenting and interacting with us. And, Yeah. Making it fun for us. So, Absolutely. as always, next week we'll uh, it'll be noon central. We'll have another live uh, broadcast ready to go. Yeah, and if you're watching the replay and you have questions, feel free to leave them, and we'll address them next week. We'll, yeah. we'll answer them, but also address them in the video next week because if you have yeah. that question, other people do too. Yep, so. that's a great that's a great point. So you can drop them in the comments below because we keep an eye on the social accounts. Yeah, uh, you can also email us. So Absolutely. Sarah Sarah mentioned earlier hers is Sarah with an H at ozfence.com. Mine is Joe at ozfence.com. You can send us an email. Yep. Uh, you can message the social accounts. That comes to us as well. Yep. You could send a carrier pigeon. <laughs> I'm not sure how to accept it or anything like that. Yeah. But, Get a little uh, wet today. Yeah. It, so don't send it today, please. Don't, <laughs> don't, and the message would get a little bit wet, and that poor bird would just, yes. Don't yeah. send carrier pigeons today. Only when it's <laughs> only when the weather's nice. But, uh yeah, if you have a question, comment, or otherwise, send it to us. Um, if you guys don't like the page, the Ozark Fence page, please go ahead and like it. Yeah. Uh, make sure you set up your notifications. Facebook's kind of weird about notifications. Uh, make sure That's you true. click the arrow to the right of like and make sure you're seeing notifications or you're seeing content from us. Yep. Um, if not, Facebook makes us pay them money to let you know what we're doing, <laughs> and that doesn't make a lot of sense. So uh, if you guys are watching us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Same yeah. story. Hit the bell on the right. That way, YouTube gets sends you a notification when we're scheduling these uh, these live broadcasts. And yeah, yeah, leave your comments below, and we'll see you guys next week. Absolutely. Have a good weekend, guys. Thanks guys, so much. Have a great weekend.